from the bank that their deposits should not be mismanaged and let the bank go bankrupt. So those are really the controls that apply. But as far as this matter of uh, client-bank relationship is concerned, that is governed in terms of uh, the various other uh, regulatory agencies that I have mentioned, being particularly the Financial Services Board. They are the people that should have, by this time, have come out and informed South Africans that what is to be done. And I, I believe that, uh, I've, I've called for it before, and I certainly believe that even a commission of inquiry would bring about may, uh, perhaps a much needed cure to this infringement. And uh, such a commission of inquiry, I believe, would unearth a whole host of other practices that will in, indeed show that Oak Bay is not an isolated case, that there is, in fact, a time for us in South Africa to ask the harder questions that are the banks and the financial institutions still acting within the conscripts of the law. And, and I, I think that it, it will put to rest not only to the uh, minds of South Africans, but to the international investors that we all agree that we need them. We all say that we need a foreign direct investor. But under the current climate, with the conduct of the banks, I cannot see any foreign direct investor who will have confidence in our banking system because the decision most certainly, it seems to have been arbitrary, it seems to have been collusive, and therefore talking of an oligopoly and a cartel. And that cannot be allowed and must not be allowed. It is also important, I believe, for the CEOs of the banks to break ranks and themselves speak independently on explain to the South Africans as to how they reached this drastic decision. I also agree with uh, Professor Robert Vivian of Viz University, where he says that a decision of this nature indeed should have been subjected to a judicial process and not just be taken arbitrarily. And I think that in the absence of any regulatory mechanism to deal with how the bank can arrive at such a decision, Parliament therefore would be doing well to ensure that there is a legislation that can bring in further regulation in this regard. Yeah, but, but since I mean the audacity of the banks as we've seen, I mean they have ample opportunity to come out clean. If there is, is anything untoward regarding the Oak Bay Group, then that kind of information can be taken to the authorities, but not even uh, to cite specifically what the issues are pertaining to the closure of the banks and, and the fact that it had a domino effect. One after the other, they closed the accounts. Uh, government tried to, to intervene and uh, nothing came much of that. And wh where does that leave the relationship between industry, workers, and also the, uh, the landscape with government? Well, this helplessness from everyone, uh, uh, we are all lamenting about this. Workers have been let down by the system. What is clear here, uh, 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 this has actually exposed where power lies. That power lies with monopoly capital. They are in charge. What they have just done, they have just dished out a lesson to everyone. And the discourse, I want to repeat this, the discourse that we are having now is not helpful long term. These workers, they are being failed. We can argue about who is responsible. We can argue about what is necessary. The fact of the matter is that in a country with 9 million unemployed people, that is hybrid in jobs, that is so mired in poverty, we have a situation where the voters, the taxpayers, the workers have been failed by the system. And we need to start to engage, to say, our failure to restructure this economic system that is not helpful to the cause of the workers. How, uh, how long are we going to tolerate that failure? And government itself has to be reflective and reflect on the fact that for the last two decades, these companies have been in charge. Some of them, uh, we have colluded, they have only been given a slap on the wrist, but we have not dismantled uh, 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 this uh, 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 monopoly. 
because the reality is that these banks have the power to do uh, 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 what mm. they are doing because they are powerful. If you do not dismantle monopoly, whatever regulatory framework that you put in place, they will find ways of dealing with it because there is no competition. These people are not competing. What they are doing is that they are colluding. Mm. But the, the, the discourse for us is that we have seen this before, and we are, continue, we are going to continue to see it. We have seen it in other sectors, and the banks are just the latest now to actually showcase their power. At uh, the end of the day, what we have in South Africa is, is, is an economic system that is not acting in the best interest of the people. Those taxpayers, those workers, they are being punished because... Uh, the big boys are fighting for a seat at, uh, 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 at the table. And this has got nothing to do with workers. We want to repeat with Kossad, workers have no dog on this hand and they should not have been punished in the manner that they are being punished. Yeah, let's uh, bring Tepo in. Where do you see this play itself out? Are we likely to see litigation? Are we likely uh, to see worst case scenario, of course, God forbid, that there would be closure of the, the companies and affecting many jobs, my own included. Um, so where do you see this played out? The directors of Oak Bay remain duty-bound to have to take the necessary steps to protect the company, its workers, the shareholders, and all the stakeholders. And the best remedy for that is through the courts. The longer they take to go to court, the more, unfortunately, it will exacerbate an already untenable situation. But also there has been an assertion that somehow maybe the banks might be, have had information that is incriminating upon Oak Bay or the owners or the directors. That is not the job of the banks. The job of the banks, should they have come across such information, would have had to go to the relevant law enforcement agencies so that this matter can be thoroughly investigated and prosecuted if it need be. Their failure to also have taken such a step is what brings us to this much greater suspicion that uh, their decision could not have been founded in law, but it was based on arbitrary and I would dare say political machinations. Mm. And, and Cesar, just lastly, in terms of the employees, of course, being caught in the crossfire of uh, what some had said is a political uh, um, war against certain individuals and that this is merely a soft target. I mean, what happens to the employees in this case? Well, for us, we actually think that the workers in general and South Africans, they owe those workers solidarity and support. If South Africans refuse to allow banks to treat other workers in a manner that they've been doing, if people uh, forget their sectarian political uh, 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 feelings and look at the fact that we have uh, people's livelihoods that are, are, are being compromised and, 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 and by the actions of the banks, we need to unite as workers all across the Caribbean guys to deal with this issue and make sure that in uniting we push back because it might be okay today but it will be somebody else tomorrow if we fail to stop it now it is coming Indeed. All right, thanks so much. Uh, indeed, Cizwe Pamla, he's the Kosatu spokesperson. Sepo Khadima, a political analyst, thanks indeed for staying with us regarding the issue with the Oak Bay accounts and what uh, the Reserve Bank governor, uh, governor had said uh, that uh, the uh, federal bank essentially doesn't have uh, any arm to play or they, they cannot interfere because of regulatory constraints.